masonry moisture in old houses. Old buildings frequently have the unwanted accompanying aspect of moisture in their walls, which causes increasing damage over the years. The unpleasant accompanying aspect is referred to as rising ground moisture. In the graphic diagram you see how ground moisture is rising. It's a nearly invisible phenomenon. It becomes visible in higher portions of the wall due to the damaged plaster. The results are damage of paint, water stains, salt efflorescence and plaster flacking on the facade of the house. By the interaction of complex chemical and physical forces acting on this masonry, it will be slowly but surely destroyed. Basic data From building physics we know that water is absorbed from building materials like a sponge. This effect is referred to as the capillary effect. If we put two materials of different porosity into a water bowl, we will observe the following. Building materials with larger pores absorb more, while those with smaller pores absorb less. The thinner these pores are, the more capillary they have, the higher the water rises. In old masonry that lacks a horizontal moisture barrier or there it is partly rotten, ground moisture rises into masonry. Ground moisture in the capillaries of masonry rises to a point where it oozes out as water vapor at the so-called evaporation zone. This results in the capillary head in masonry which grows a little every year. It may be manifested as annual rings caused by different degrees of salt efflorescence. Moisture penetrates the ground due to precipitation, dew or groundwater. It then enters the foundation of masonry where it rises and evaporates, mainly in higher portions of the wall. The greater the quantity of moisture, the larger is the amount of evaporation at the evaporation zone. As a result, salts that damage the basic structure of a building enter the masonry from the ground. The salts rise in a dissolved in water condition into the capillaries of masonry and are deposited in the evaporation zone in higher layers of masonry, especially in the pores of the plaster. The salts of building materials are also dissolved by the moisture stream, rise and additionally enter the pores of the plaster. Due to such evaporation, most salts are deposited in air pores, which are crucial for the regulation of the atmosphere in the room and clog the pores. The breathability of the plaster is thus reduced. In conventional plasters, salts usually rise to a visible plaster surface when they crystallize. The pressure of such crystallization and other chemical and physical mechanisms eventually destroy the plaster. In so-called renovation plasters, the aggressive salts are deposited in the lowest layer of plaster. The salts clog these pores and the plaster becomes waterproof. This makes the capillary head rise even higher and destroy further layers of plaster and wall. As wet masonry permits heat to flow out more easily than the dry masonry, the heat insulation of the building worsens. This means the following for you. Much higher heating costs in the winter. The magnetophysical drying out process. Water has special properties. We get many interesting phenomena when energy influences water. For instance, when you rub a wool scarf against a plastic tube, you create an electrostatic energy field. Did you know that even this small energy field can deflect a 2 mm thin thread of water? Certain energy forms can direct water molecules. Observation showed that a similar situation occurs with the magnetophysical high-tech procedure of Aquapole. The exact mechanism of action are still being investigated.
an aquapole system was installed in the building. It covers the entire area of the building. This patented high-tech system, which is placed in a special case, you see some bigger models here, performs two basic functions. It dries out masonry with specific energy waves and also keeps it dry. This explains the word magnetokinesis, which we coined for the first time in 1988. Waves similar to electromagnetic ones cause motion or kinesis. In this case, it is the movement of rising capillary moisture. The energy wave structures apparently play a role in nature and in the cosmos in cases of spiral phenomena. Mr. Mohan was awarded an honorary prize by the Ministry of Science for researching these energy wave structures on behalf of Aquapole Company. The aquapole system causes no electrosmog because it does not require any electrical connection or batteries. According to a hypothesis of the inventor and patent holder Mr. Wilhelm Mohorn, the futuristic internal structure of the aquapole system is a novel generator with an innovative mode of energy supply. Its components are reminiscent of those of the long forgotten but ingenious inventor Nikola Tesla, who laid the foundation for the worldwide introduction of the three phase alternating current. For his basic functional research and successful implementation of these principles to dry out walls, Mr. Mohan was awarded the Kaplan Medaille, the highest award for researchers and inventors in Austria. Aquapole Company developed complex and innovative high-tech measurement procedures for the production and quality control of the Aquapole systems. These guarantee high quality and 100% functionality in the long term. The phases of drying out the magnetokinetic process of drying out walls takes place in two overlapping phases. The period in which wall moisture evaporates in upper portion of the wall is known as the evaporation phase. However, a large part of the moisture moves back downward into the ground due to the waves produced by the device. We refer to this period of drying as the dehumidification phase. During the drying out process in the evaporation phase, the salts dissolved in water are transported to the plastazone, where they partly crystallize because of the evaporation process. The evaporation process, along with the crucial process of partial desalination, usually takes 3 to 12 months. This was confirmed by exact salt measurements in an expert report based on a major project in Germany. The less salts there are in the basic structure of the building, the less is the residual moisture in the wall. However, the large part of the masonry moisture moves back in the ground through the capillary system in the wall, which is the actual phase of dehumidification. What remains is the chemically bound residual moisture in masonry. The external climates might play a major role when walls contain a lot of salt. This is why we occasionally encounter moisture variations due to climatic factors, although the wall will have achieved its level of residual moisture. If the wall merely needs a new coat of paint, it should be painted after the evaporation phase. According to the ÖNORM, Austrian standard, and according to our long years of practical experience, the actual plaster renovation should be performed only after the wall has been dried. One thus avoids migration of the salts into the new plaster and consequent undesirable chemical reaction. When the salt content of the old plaster is too high, moisture spots will appear on the surface. Their intensity depends on the level of humidity. As we know, salts have hygroscopic properties in that they strongly attract moisture.